this chapter, we will be exploring the calculus of trigonometry. This video is about the derivatives of all the other trigonometric functions. Okay, so in a previous lesson here, or video here, we looked at the derivatives of sine and cosine. Okay, and remember what they are here. If you've got y is equal to the sine of x, then we know that the derivative is going to be the cosine of x. Whoops. And if y is equal to the cosine of x, we know that the derivative is going to be negative sine of x. So now the question is, well, what are the derivatives of all the other trig functions? Okay, so like I suggested in that, in our, in that previous video here, your experience probably suggests that a lot of uh, the trig that we do is based on the behavior of these two functions. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you how you determine the, the derivative, let's say tangent, okay? So if y is equal to the tangent of x, which we know is going to be equal to the sine of x divided by the cosine of x, if that's true, then what's the derivative of sine of x, uh, sorry, the tangent of x? And once we go through this process here, uh, you'll have an idea of, of how we find the derivative of, of like t uh, cotangent, cosecant, and secant. All the rest of that is going to kind of built the same way here. So let's just uh, dive right in, okay? So what I'm seeing here is a quotient. So I would apply the, the quotient rule. So the derivative of the numerator would be cosine of x multiplied by the denominator, the cosine of x, minus, we would take the derivative of the denominator here. So actually, we, let's, let's multiply, sorry, it's the numerator multiplied by the derivative of the denominator, which would be negative sine of x all over the denominator squared, okay? Now notice what happens. There are two negatives there. I've got cosine squared of x plus the sine squared of x all over the cosine of x. And I absolutely love that numerator because I know, okay, because of trigonometric identities, I know that that numerator is going to just be one. And if I've got 1 over the cosine squared of x, I wouldn't leave it like that. I would write that as the secant squared of x. And there you go. That's the derivative of tangent. So let's go up here. So if y is equal to the tangent of x, y primed is equal to the secant squared of x. Now, that exact same reasoning Okay, or that exact same type of procedure here can be applied to cotangent, cosecant, and secant. And in fact, what would happen here is you would get these as your derivatives. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give them to you here. So if we went to cotangent of x, y primed would be equal to the negative cosecant squared of x. If I had y is equal to the cosecant of x, now remember that is equal to one over sine, the derivative is going to be the negative cosecant of x multiplied by the cotangent of x. That's a little bit more complicated than the other ones have been, but that's, that's what you would get here. And likewise, our last one here, if you've got the secant of x, y prime would equal uh, the secant of x multiplied by the uh, tangent. Whoops, I wanted to write cotangent there, but actually it's just the tangent of x. And so those are all of the other trig functions that you would get, okay, and their derivatives. So now we're just going to go through and I'm going to do a few questions like we, we, we did previously, just so that you get, again, used to what these derivatives look like. One little note here that I want to make here, and this is just a serendipity, that if a function, okay, begins with C, okay, if a function begins with the letter C, its derivative is negative. That wasn't by design, just kind of by coincidence, okay? Cosecant has a negative, uh, cotangent has a negative derivative, and way up here we looked at it, co cosine also has a negative derivative. So if you just keep that in mind here, that will help with, with some of that, okay? Anyway, let's have a look at some problems. Okay, so let's just jump in and do just a small handful of questions here. 
this will get more interesting in a, in a little bit in a, a later video here. We'll start to do applications and then I, I think you'll really start to appreciate what's going on here. Uh, so just to start off with here, so y is equal to the tangent squared of x. And then again, the, the big issue here is identifying that there are, are two functions here really that we've got to be concerned about. And the first one is that square. So it's the tangent of x being squared here. So that when I take the derivative, first thing I got to deal with is that square, right? So it's going to cause me to bring down the 2 multiplied by the tangent of x to the 1. And then I would multiply by the derivative of the tangent of x. And the derivative of the tangent is secant squared. And then you would multiply by the derivative of, of the x, but that's just going to be 1. So no, no worries there. Now at this point here, you might think, okay, you might think, well, you know what? I can kind of play with this a little bit because tangent, for example, is, is sine over cosine, which is essentially like putting another, another secant there because I end up with another cosine in the denominator. So I, I could write this as 2 multiplied by the sine of x multiplied by the secant cubed of x. And yeah, you could do that. Okay, I, don't, I want to acknowledge the fact that yeah, you can do that. Uh, but really, you're just moving furniture around. You're not, you're not simplifying anything. Okay, it's still basically the, the, even the same amount of, of factors there. So yeah, there's really no need. That right there is probably good enough. 2 tangent of x multiplied by the secant squared of x. Okay, let's take a look at this next one here. We've got negative 1 quarter of the cosecant of negative x. So when we take a look at this here, um, basically we, we've got this coefficient out front there, so we're just going to leave that coefficient for right now. So negative 1 quarter. Uh, when I take the derivative of cosecant, it is going to be negative cosecant of what's inside there, because there, there's a bit of an, an application of the, of the chain rule here, multiplied by uh, the cotangent of negative 8x, okay? So this little bit right here is all the derivative of the cosecant, just that part right there. So this negative cosecant cotangent. And now we would have to multiply by the derivative of what's inside there, which would be our um, uh, neg sorry, negative 8. Okay, so what have we got here? Well, I've got a negative 1 quarter multiplied by a negative multiplied by a negative 8. So the result here is actually going to end up being negative 2. And then I will have the cosecant, sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, the cosecant of negative 8x multiplied by the cotangent of negative 8x. And, and once again, um, I mean, there's a little bit that you might do with that in terms of, of rewriting those in time, terms of sine and cosine and, and moving things around, but you're really not going to improve the, the way this looks uh, by very much at all. Now let's take one uh, look at one other question here. And this is kind of going back a ways in, in terms of the way we use derivatives here. We're going to come up with the equation of a tangent line. Okay, And so remember that the equation of a tangent line is just the equation of a line. So y minus y1 is equal to slope times x minus x1. That's all we need. So we're going to find the tangent line to the curve y equals the cosecant of 2x at x equal negative pi over 8. Awesome. Well, the very first thing I need to do is get that point. I know that the x coordinate here is going to be negative pi over 8. But what I, what I don't know is what the y coordinate would be. And I actually want to get that first here. So my y coordinate here is going to be the cosecant of 2 times negative pi over 8. Okay, which will be the cosecant of negative pi over 4. Okay, now let's just think about that for a second here. Negative pi over 4 is going to be in the fourth quadrant. So I know, and I know this because I know that cosecant is related to to sine. I know that sine is going to be negative in the fourth quadrant. So my result here is going to be negative. Now, I know that cosecant is 1 over sine, and I know that the sine of pi over 4 is going to be uh, 1 over root 2. So because it's, it's the reciprocal of sine, this is going to end up being the reciprocal of that answer. So this is actually just going to be 
negative 2, negative root 2. So therefore, at this point, I know that my, my equation is going to be y minus negative root 2, and I, I'll change that in a second, is equal to my slope, don't know what that is, multiplied by x minus negative pi over 8. So at this point, it's y plus the square root of 2 is equal to blank, my, my slope, multiplied by x plus pi over 8. Good. I'm missing the slope, though. And that's why we have derivatives. So now let's take the derivative of our function here. And it's just the cosecant of 2x. And so that's going to be the negative cosecant of 2x multiplied by the cotangent of 2x multiplied by the derivative of what's inside here, which is just going to be 2. I'm sorry, you, that's a little off to the side there. Okay, so there's my derivative. Now what I want to do is I want to evaluate the derivative here at uh, negative pi over 8. So that's going to be negative 2 multiplied by the cosecant of 2 times negative pi over 8 multiplied by the cotangent of 2 times negative pi over 8. Oh, there's a lot going on there. But none of it's very complicated. This is just going to be negative 2 multiplied by the cosecant of, well, it's going to be negative pi over 4. And you know what? I already know what that is. We, we just figured that out. And then this will be the cotangent of negative pi over 4. Now, I'm going to have to think about the sign here. But I already know that the cotangent of pi over 4 is going to have a 1 in it. So this is actually looking pretty good here. So this will be negative 2 multiplied by, well, the cosecant, just look up here. The cosecant of negative pi over 4 is negative root 2. So this will be negative 2 multiplied by negative root 2 multiplied by what? Okay, well, negative pi over 4 is in quadrant 4, cotangent and tangent will both be negative in quadrant 4. And I know that the cotangent of pi over 4 is going to be 1 here, so this will be negative 1. So my answer here will be negative 2 times negative root 2 times negative 1, so negative 2 root 2. So therefore, we can summarize this up. Now I've got the slope, so now I know it's going to be y plus the square root of 2 will equal negative 2 root 2 x plus pi over 8. And that's the equation of my tangent. Okay, Everything still works exactly the same as it did before when we were doing derivatives of, of like the polynomials, the rationals, the radicals. It's just that now this has got a little bit of a trig flair to it. Okay.